Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, July 31st, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, both free sites. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Hi, Just mommy. consider. Hi, <laughs> Joe. Welcome to Dwyer Studios, folks, where two year olds are in the background. Uh, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider Hi. this video to be a second opinion no. from a complete stranger hey. online. Hold on. Hey, babe. Can you? Can you grab her? Thanks. Can you close the door? Okay. All right. Uh, now that we've gotten those technical difficulties out of the way, um, let's talk about Dylan White's victory over Joseph Parker. Now, I see, just looking at the comment section to uh, the pre-fight video where I picked Joseph Parker, I see that Dylan White fans are letting me have it online, right? Good for them. <laughs> good for them. They feel that I have underestimated their guy. I did and I have. Guilty plea. Right here. One minute and eleven seconds into the video. Let me say this. In the last two fights Dylan White has had, he's beaten an unbeaten former heavyweight champion. That's who Lucas Brown was. Dylan White did that by stoppage. Right? And he's beaten a once beaten former heavyweight champion, Joseph Parker. And he did knock down Parker one time. We'll talk about that second round knockdown a little later in this video. So let me say this. Even a critic like me, a guy who picked against Dylan White in both fights, openly concedes here online that he is deserving of a shot at the heavyweight title. Whether that's Anthony Joshua, whether that's Deontay Wilder, I have to say when a guy beats an unbeaten former heavyweight champ, then a once beaten former heavyweight champ, Parker's only loss in a unification match, in my opinion that guy has earned the right to demand a shot at the title. Now let's talk about the red flags, right? Because we're interested in the guy's prospects. Understand too, let me say this. This isn't a speech site where I give speeches and people agree with me. Long time viewers know that's far from the case. Let's make this a collaboration. So I'm gonna make some statements here. They might be fair, they might be unfair. You tell us your reaction in the comment section to this video. Now the red flags with Dylan White is when he's hurt, folks, he's badly hurt, right? The end of the Anthony Joshua fight, let's face it, Dylan White's family knew he couldn't continue in that fight, right? The guy got hit, looked like he was hit by a car, the guy was finished. The end of this fight, let's face it, Dylan White is lucky, lucky. The clock did not have another 60 seconds on it, right? He gets off the canvas and the best he could do, I mean the best he could do, is what he did. Hold on to Joseph Parker. Folks, he had nothing left, right? He got dropped. Look at his facial expression. It didn't even look like Dylan White. When he gets up, he's in trouble, right? Fortunately for him, it was the end of the fight. Let's say this too, and it's a problem. You're in the heavyweight division, you have guys with some big overhand right hands, right? Deontay Wilder, folks, he hits you with a straight right. Anthony Joshua, I know he couldn't get that right hand out of the holster against Joseph Parker, but when he throws a right hand, it's devastating. Now in this fight, Dylan White gets hit with a bunch of overhand rights, doesn't he? That 12th round, the punch that has him on the canvas, that's a right hand, right? Earlier in the fight, you see that Parker's having some success with that right hand. That's not the punch to be vulnerable to in today's heavyweight division. I would say if you're vulnerable to any punch against Deontay Wilder, it shouldn't be the straight right hand. 
in my opinion, Dylan White, <clears throat> who fought a guy roughly his size this fight, is going to have some problems against guys who are a little bit bigger, who have greater ring coverage. In other words, I think Dylan White just lines up to be the perfect kind of opponent against Deontay Wilder. Right? Why are we mentioning Wilder? Because as we said earlier in this video, the next step for Dylan White is a heavyweight championship attempt. Right? So let's just name it. We've already seen him against AJ. Right? In that fight, I thought White looked great in the first round. I'm one of those who believes White when he says he hurt himself during that fight. Right? In that fight, it's when Joshua decides enough of this and comes inside that he destroys Dylan White. Let me say this too. Dylan White is a front foot heavy jabber. He has a great jab, folks. It's a great jab. But understand, he's not moving backwards with the jab. He's not a guy who lures you in. And then as you're coming forward, he's hitting you with the jab, right? That's Ali, right? He's not a guy backing up, hitting you with the jab, leaning back. No, he's coming forward. He's not Ali. He's Sonny Liston, another great jab. He's coming forward trying to find you, to bludgeon you with the jab. Larry Holmes, that's who he is, right? He's coming forward on you. To use that jab as a joust, right? He wants to come, hit you with the jab, then follow up with other shots. Now, I'll just say he's hyper-aggressive, right? He's coming forward. He's finding Joseph Parker. He's not letting Parker off the hook like Carlos Tackham did when they fought, right? The problem I have with that, and again, we're pointing out rough areas here because he's at the stage where the next step is against a heavyweight champion and Joshua and Wilder are heavy-handed. The problem is Dylan White's a guy who a Joshua or a Wilder will know where he's going to be because Dylan White's going to be trying to come forward on them. As crazy as that sounds. Right? And Dylan White's not a southpaw like Luis Ortiz, who, by the way, looked great in his last fight. Dylan White's coming in at right-hand friendly angles. And so, in a heavyweight division that right now is premised on punching power, more than boxing ability. Right? Joseph Parker's the only guy to go the distance, folks, with either Wilder or Joshua, who did not get knocked out in a rematch, right? In other words, every guy Wilder has faced, Wilder has KO'd at some time. Every guy. Anthony Joshua, it's only Joseph Parker who went the distance with them. So these are heavy-handed knockout punchers. And in Dylan White, you're talking about a guy who's not going to avoid the confrontation, right? He's not a guy who's going to be in the ring saying, let me tire out Dylan White, excuse me, Deontay Wilder. Let me get on my back foot, show some movement, stick a jab, win some rounds, have this guy chasing me for 12 rounds, have this slugger get tired. He's not a guy who's going to force Anthony Joshua to get a second win, right? No, this is the opposite. This is the guy who shows up to a gunfight, who wants to stay in the pocket, right? Against sluggers, that's dangerous. Just picture what would have happened if Ali, back in the day against Sonny Liston, said, okay, Sonny, I'm here for a shootout. Right? That wouldn't work. The part of boxing where guys are on their back foot and they're slipping and they're waiting three or four rounds until you lose your fastball before they come in, that's not this fighter's game. Let me say this too. Right? 
Dylan White is a decent athlete. Right? Here's where we get a little dodgy. Maybe some of you think I'm dodgy already from the comments already made. But Dylan White's a decent athlete. He's skilled with a great jab. But he's not a great athlete. Right? As I was watching this fight, you know, Dylan White's huffing and puffing at times. He's taking breathers at times in the fight. And the fight's a very active fight. Right? I didn't get the feeling I was looking at a guy, too, who could just change tempo. Right? Come out of someone else. In other words, he's front foot heavy. At times, he'll stay in the pocket, but he's not really backing up. I didn't really see the flashes of great athleticism. Right? Put another way, I was watching uh, the other day again, Klitschko against David Hay. And there are parts in that fight, say what you want about David Hay, but David Hay, when he has two good Achilles, right, there are parts where Klitschko steps on the gas and David Hay, just off athleticism, is able to just move his upper body and dodge shots and move away. That's not even an integral part of David Hay's game. But you sensed that David Hay just had some athleticism in reserve. I don't see that kind of fluidity with Dylan White. Let me also say this too. Let's get psychological for a moment here. Right? And I, I thought Dylan White won the fight. Don't get me wrong. Right? I'm, I'm here saying, look, the guy won the fight. We're just placing him under a bigger microscope because of his status as a guy worthy of a heavyweight attempt, heavyweight championship attempt. Dylan White's game involves feints. It's really why he won the fight, right? He's in the pocket, and you notice he's always moving, right? He's coming in. There's a little bit of Joe Fraser in him, right? He's moving his head. He's moving. He's, he's fainting and all this other stuff. It makes him look more active than his opponent. I didn't get the feeling he bludgeoned Joseph Parker. Far from it. That second round knockdown, and it's key, right, is clearly not a knockdown. That's clearly a clash of heads, right? What I want to do to the Dylan White crowd here is say, please, watch the film again. Right? I'm guessing Dylan White today knows that's a clash of heads. That's not a knockdown. But in terms of charisma, in terms of scoring around, you see Joseph Parker who looks passive. Right? I'm not saying he is passive, but Joseph Parker looks relaxed and he's just there, you know, looking cash, right? Like he's listening to jazz or something. Dylan White's the guy who's active, who makes it look like he's moving and dictating what's happening, right? He's fainting, fainting, fainting. Now, let me say this. These are the kind of fighters who Muhammad Ali feasted on in the 1960s, right? Understand what Parker should have done, in my opinion, is just taking a step back. Right? Moved around the ring. Emphasize movement more than punches. Understand at a certain spacing, Dylan White's feints don't matter. Because the feints are hinting at punches he's going to throw. If you're far enough away from the guy, he can't throw those punches. So let's say I'm Dylan White and I come up and I'm you know, fainting like I'm going to throw a left hook. If I am back enough away from that left hook, the left hook faint doesn't matter. Right? Go back and look at both Ali Liston fights, both of them. How many of Liston's faints do you remember? Keep in mind, murderous puncher destroys Floyd Patterson twice. 
right? They're interviews. They're, they're tapes of Joe Lewis, no less, calling Sonny Liston the best ever before his first fight against Ali. Right, Liston was known for walking guys into tough punches. You don't even remember the feints against Ali. Because Ali is dancing around the ring. In other words, at, at some point, Ali is too far away for Liston's feints to have credibility. At some point, Ali's moving too much. Right? For Liston to stay with one set of feints. He has to feint, adjust, feint, adjust. Now, I've seen Parker fights where Parker has gotten on his back foot and he's been a ghost. He's been dancing around the ring. Right here, he's staying too close to the pocket. Right? I believe the problem that trips up Parker is he comes out great early in the fight. Looks good to me in the first round. Looks like he's close to cracking the code right before the headbutt in, I believe, the second or third round. Right before he goes down the first time. Right? Then he gets thrown off. Then he's in la-la land a bit. Looks like he's getting back in the saddle when he goes down the second time. Now, the second time, legit knockdown, it's a left hook. Right? It's a left hook. And that's important because that tells you how lethal Dylan White's left is. That's his jab hand. He can throw hooks. I believe when Parker gets up, by the time he clears his head and gets his courage back, we're in the 12th round. That's when Parker goes for it and knocks Dylan White down. Right? My point to you is simply this. Against certain opponents, Deontay Wilder, you're talking about 6-7. Right? 6 Seven. You're going to have a setup where Wilder, who has ring coverage, Wilder can hit you halfway across the ring. Right? You're going to have a setup where for Dylan White's feints to work, and it's a big part of his game, Dylan White is going to have to get in Wilder's wheelhouse. Right? That's dangerous. Unless Dylan White is going to come all the way inside, get underneath Wilder and work Wilder's body, Dylan White will be placing himself at risk. Especially given that he got hit with some right hands here, which is Wilder's signature. If he decides he's going to set up shop in the pocket on Dylan White, excuse me, on De Deontay Wilder, to make his feints matter. Right? Let me say this too. Psychologically, it's clear to me that Dylan White is what I call a bully. There's a moment in this fight where Dylan White just wants to push Joseph Parker over the top ring. I know it sounds ridiculous. But Dylan White comes up on Joseph Parker, and it's a wrestling move. He leans on Parker. Parker's between him and the top rope. And it looks like Parker almost falls out the ring. Right? Another time, Dylan White comes up and looks like he wants to lace, we called it back in the day. Lace Joseph Parker. It's a sign of disrespect. Right? Dylan White wants to be physical with you. He wants you to know, look, this is my schoolyard. I'm the bully here. I make the rules. Now, the problem I have with bullies is that if they don't control the narrative, if they don't, if you don't buy in to their superiority, right? If you don't accept what I call the high buy-in, oh, this is the man, you know, then things fall apart. So, Sonny Liston, big bully. Right? Ali's moving around the ring. Liston's feints are rendered irrelevant. Ali's not even throwing punches at times. That first round, he hardly throws any punches, if any. Right? He's dancing around the ring and stuff. I think the whole point was to show Liston, look, your game doesn't apply to this fight. Maybe you're the bully if I'm stationary in the pocket. <clears throat> but if it's a mobile pocket, 
You're just another guy. And understand, bullies can't handle being just another guy. So Dylan White is going to win every pre-fight, gloves are off discussion. Dylan White's a master trash talker, just like Ali was. Right? Master trash talker. But you know, what Mike Tyson says has a lot of truth. Everyone has a plan until they get hit in the mouth. I get the feeling that if things don't go Dylan White's way, in other words, if he's not fighting an out-of-shape Lucas Brown, right, who's there to get hit with a jab, who's partially blinded, if he's not fighting a Joseph Parker, who is a bit too leisurely and hanging around the pocket a bit too much, where Dylan White's faints become an issue. If he's fighting a guy who just doesn't care about him, isn't caught up in the trash talk, and is just thinking in terms of throwing some heavy right hands, or as Anthony Joshua decided, just coming in the pocket and throwing hooks to his body, I think a lot of Dylan White's game goes out the window. In other words, you have to believe this guy is an elite heavyweight and you have to fall for the feints and you have to fall for the pomp and pageantry, right, to be under his spell, right? One man's opinion. So let me just close by saying this. <clears throat> I view Dylan White as an overachiever, right? I think the 12th round here, obviously... I'm in love with the 12th round because I picked Joseph Parker, but I think the 12th round here says a lot. Right? Dylan White gets hit with the right hand. Dylan White goes down. Right? When he gets up, the construct is gone. He's just the guy trying to survive the rest of the fight. Right? It's only because I feel that the heavyweight division right now is being run by a couple of guys who are still figuring out the sport. It's only because I don't place Anthony Joshua or Deontay Wilder in the pantheon of the great heavyweights in history that I feel that Dylan White would have a chance against them. Right? But as I've said, look at Dylan White and compare him to Ernie Terrell. Compare him to, you know, Guys who have a jab, use it to bludgeon you, then come inside and do other things. Right? All I can say is, you know, I give Dylan White credit. He's a guy who brings a lot of energy and a lot of spirit with him. If Joseph Parker had Dylan White's energy level, we'll, we'll call it. He probably ruled the division. Right? I give Dylan White credit on attitude. Right? But I'll just say this. Folks, revisit that 12th round. Right? A lot of Dylan White's game, in my opinion, besides a great jab, besides great energy level, besides a left hook that drops Joseph Parker, besides a lot of courage, Right? I still think that other guys at the weight have more upside. Right? You know, Dylan White against Deontay Wilder, I'm one of those who take Wilder. I'll just be blunt. Right? Dylan White against Anthony Joshua, he's already lost to Joshua once. Right? White definitely deserves a shot at the heavyweight title. But let's just say there are a bunch of heavyweights out there who, you know, against Dylan White, I might lean with his opponent. Right? Joseph Parker, Dylan White in a rematch. Now that Parker realizes that he could drop Dylan White the way he did in the 12th round, I take Parker in a rematch. Don't get me wrong. The heavyweight division is going to avoid Parker for the next two years. Right? Parker, unfortunately, has taken himself out of the running for now. I believe heavyweights looking at film know Parker is dangerous. 
right? The Parker's in that zone where he was well positioned. He had a share of the title. He lost to Joshua. He lost to Dylan White. No, there's no outcry for Deontay Wilder to fight him. There's no outcry for Tyson Fury to fight him. There's no outcry for Manuel Char. Let's not forget him to fight him. People coming to the heavyweight division, Oleksandr Usyk, Murat Gassiev, there's no outcry for them to fight him, right? I think Parker, and I know people think that I'm too in love with Parker, <laughs> but I think Parker has more upside than Dylan White. But I concede, Dylan White beat him. And Dylan White is the one who deserves the shot at the title. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you take exception with anything I've said, look, I'm thick-skinned. Go ahead and tell me about it in the comment section to this video, right? Rugged heavyweights taking on tough competition, former heavyweight champs, and winning spirited fights. Get my respect. Guys who get caught, go down, get up with nothing, and find a way to finish the fight get my respect. Dylan White has my respect. No question about it. He is a world-class heavyweight. He deserves a shot at the title. I'm just not ready right now to give him the crown. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to reading your comments. Thanks for stopping by.